Good morning, team. It is Tuesday, February 9th, and you've got it. Yep, winter is still here. I think it's going to be here for a while. Thank you for joining us this morning. I'm Amy Kaur, and I'm joined live by Kevin Vanek, and we are out of the Goose Island office. So grab your mug of coffee, tea, or your power smoothie, and let's jump into another episode of Coffee with Amy and Kevin. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Amy. Yes, grab your coffee. Yes, the changing seasons are one of the reasons we love Chicago, right? So today, we're going to talk about this hot market again. We know it's no secret. In most markets, it is hot. And over the last few weeks, we've talked about working with buyers. Today, we're going to talk about working with sellers. And so today, we've got two key things we're going to share in terms of working with sellers to make sure that not only are you capturing listing opportunities, but that your sellers are prepared so that you can create success for them in this hot market. Thank you, Kevin. That is right. This morning, we're going to talk about the market that we're in and how it uh, lays out for sellers right now. We know that there isn't a lot of inventory in a lot of our markets. And so this is an opportunity for somebody who's thinking about selling to be able to come into this market and get a great price. One of the things I've been talking to a lot of agents about is how to position this market to sellers, because I do think we need to be careful. If we are out promoting, whether it's on social media or through direct mail, that this is a seller's market, sometimes that immediately translates to the consumer that it's so easy to sell real estate, I don't need a broker. So I think when we are promoting the idea that it is a seller's market, I think we need to change the language. Instead of calling it a seller's market, what we really want to tell the consumer out there that it is that it is a very active market, that homes are moving very quickly, and that it's actually a great opportunity for buyers and sellers if they're thinking about doing something in real estate. But what you also need to stress to these sellers is that because it is such an active and fast moving market, it is now more than ever that they need to be working with a seasoned professional to make sure that their real estate transaction goes seamlessly. So you really need to encourage the idea that in this market more than ever, having a broker that knows what they're doing is in their best interest. Now, let's talk a little bit about the idea of FISBOs. We all know it happens. As soon as the market heats up, there are those sellers out there that think that they can do it on their own. I will tell you, in our perfect listing presentation class, we do address FISBOs. We talk about how to handle it, how to kind of get out in front of it and have that dialogue right away. And here's what we would encourage you to do. If you are in conversation with somebody who's thinking about selling, I think it's okay to ask them if they're thinking about going for sale by owner. Now, some agents think, oh, I don't even want to bring this to the top of their mind because then I'm putting this idea in their head and they might decide to go in this direction. Here's the thing, better to get out in in front of it and be able to have an open dialogue as to the pros and cons of going FISBO. And here's the thing, we as agents all know Getting the buyer is usually the easiest part of a transaction, right? Usually getting the buyer and securing them and getting them under contract, I like to say that's the first 10% of the transaction. The 90% that remains is getting through inspection, getting through appraisal, getting through financing, and as we all know, just getting to closing without a hitch. So there's a lot that goes on there. So what I think is really important is when we talk with people, and I think it's okay to say, listen, I understand why you think it might be a good idea to go FISBO. I mean, in this market, things are moving quickly, but here are a few things that I think you should think about before you decide to go in that direction. I think you want to embrace the idea that they're thinking about it, but then be able to talk through the roadblocks that might lie ahead for them because they aren't professionals. They don't necessarily know how to navigate inspection issues, appraisal problems that could come up. You know, what happens if there's a hiccup in the mortgage? And I think if you can explain that in a way that's educating them, it's not going to come off defensive, but it might make them take a step back and think, you know,
you know what, maybe I should leave this to a professional. Because the thing is, is where they might think that they are saving a few bucks by not paying a commission, are they really making as much money as they could have had they enlisted a seasoned broker? And so I think you wanna make sure that you talk to them about that. This market is moving fast, but it's really important for them to make sure they put their best foot forward by hiring somebody that's gonna create success for them. Such great advice, Amy, you're right. I mean, this comes up every time there's a fast market. And the other thing we want to talk about today is something else that we find ourselves doing every time there's a fast market, which is sometimes we cut corners on preparing our sellers for success. So it is having this conversation about FISBOs. It is making sure that we're continuing to do all the things we need to do. But sometimes when it's a fast market, we skip the part of prepping our sellers in preparing for what they're about to experience. So number one, the rule is, we talked about this in terms of buyers too, is go slow to go fast, meaning take the time to meet with your sellers, explain what's happening in the market, so that once you do hit the market, they understand what they can anticipate. And so there are a couple of things that that, that that includes. Number one, be very clear about the data and what the market is telling us when it comes to pricing. In fact, just this morning, earlier, before we started filming for today, we, uh, I had a conversation with an agent whose seller reached out to them and said they wanted to increase the list price from 500000 to 575000 because they had spoken with an agent friend outside of our market. And they said it should be listed at 575. Now, here's the key. Make sure that when you're preparing your seller, you have the data, you have the proof, you have the backup for where you are positioning the property in the market. And we all know that a fast market with multiple offers does not mean that you can increase the price exponentially above what the market dictates. You can't try it or test the market even in a speedy market. So make sure that you have the data and proof ready. Explain what's happening in the market to your seller. And with that, with the fast moving market, the other expectation that needs to be set is your seller's availability and response time. Remember, in, multiple, in a multiple offer situation, you have buyers waiting. You have buyers who are really excited. There's a lot of energy and interest in their property. And the more our sellers delay or think that they have the upper hand and act like they have the upper hand, the less likely those buyers are going to not only follow through with that offer, that contract, but if they do, it will be a much more difficult transaction. So remember to keep the energy going and explain that to your seller. Our sellers sometimes get big egos or big heads when they have multiple offers and they want to pull a power play. Let's make sure that our sellers are realistic about the right way to make sure that we can get them exactly what they want. And lastly, let's talk about multiple offer situations because there are or there is a lot of confusion often about these. So number one, to make it super clear, sellers make the decision. Sellers make the decision on what they want to do. Here are the options that are available to them. Number one, if you have multiple offers coming in, number one, a seller can choose one offer right off the bat, accept it, and that's it. So that's option number one. Number two, a seller can negotiate one or more of the offers independently. And that means if I have three offers, I can ignore one or dismiss one and negotiate the other two independently without going into a multiple offer, best and final situation. And the third option is that best and final situation, where you do have the ability to go to the buyer's agents for each one of the offers that was submitted and set a time for when final offers are due. So again, just to recap those options, number one, they can uh, accept one offer right off the bat. Number two, they can negotiate one or more independently. And number three, they can ask for a best and final when it comes to multiple offers. Really great advice, Kevin. So ultimately, at the end of the day, what's really important is for you to slow down a second in this very fast market and make sure you're taking the time to do all the right things to tee your sellers up for success. Make sure that you are asking enough questions at the get-go. Make sure that you are sitting down and taking them through everything they need to know and understand in this market so that when you're in a position where you have to move quickly, they feel confident and they know that you are going to see this process through for them. So good luck out there, guys.
Yes, and make sure to join us today. We got the sales meeting coming up in about an hour and a half. So make sure you register, you have your link, you looked in your spam, clutter, and junk. So you make sure you have it. So you can join the sales meeting at 10 a.m. Central. And then also don't miss on Wednesday, tomorrow, we've got uh, Thad interviewing Dr. Gallo, who's gonna talk about the COVID-19 vaccine. And then Thursday, we've got the perfect prospecting class coming up. Amy uh, did it this past Thursday. She's going to do it again. It's fabulous. If you didn't see it last Thursday, make sure you join this Thursday. And thanks everyone for watching and make it a great day. Bye. Make it a great Tuesday. Bye.